In this tutorial, we're going to be approaching our design a little bit different than we normally do in Clo. There are a couple things that we should do and keep in mind as we go along. The first thing is, is that we're going to create this particular object larger so that we can use smaller tolerances in Clo for things like additional thickness rendering, curved side geometry. We won't be simulating because we're creating a solid object. We're going to use freeze to help keep pieces from falling and moving, and then we will hide the color in the 3D window so we don't see the freeze color. We're going to use the metal material type uh, towards the end, and most importantly, uh, as with any design, um, we're going to start with a reference image. So let's get started by creating our main pattern shape. And I'm going to use the rectangle tool here in the 2D window. Again, we're going to be started, we're going to be making this object larger than it would be in real life. I'm going to make this pattern four inches wide by two and a half inches high. And I'm going to smooth all of the corners to one half inch. Then I'm going to change my particle distance to be one. This is very, very small and we rarely use this. And when you enter this number, you will get this warning. It's fine. We know that we're doing this. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us better detail on our shape. I'm going to now go ahead and bypass that. And as you can see, you have nice smooth corners there. Now with our entire pattern piece selected, we're going to offset as an internal line that it is a very small distance away, 0 0.05 inches and click OK. This will give us an internal line inside of our pattern piece. As you can see, the pattern, the internal line is not perfectly parallel to the edge. So if we can add in a couple curve points here and move them slightly so that they are a little bit more parallel to the edge. This will help the shape of our buckle. So there we're, we're pretty good. This is the internal line is offset parallel to the edge. Next, I'm going to use the transform pattern tool, select the internal line, right click and say convert to whole. This obviously gives me a very, very skinny outline of our shape. Now what we're going to do is select this pattern piece and here's where we start to get our shape. We are going to go down to our simulation properties and we're going to change the additional thickness rendering to 8 millimeters. And look what it does in our 3D window. It makes our buckle very thick. It has also rounded the edges. This comes from the default curve side geometry being active. Next, we are going to make the roller that is going to go around the bottom of our buckle. I'm going to take my ellipse tool and I'm going to create a circle or an ellipse. The diameter is half an inch. I'm going to again change my particle distance to one and I'm going to rotate this here in the 3D window so that it begins to overlap the bottom of my buckle. Then I'm going to do the same thing here where I offset as an internal line the edge. The same measurement is still in there. I'm going to click OK and convert this to a hole as well. In this case, I am going to uncheck curved side geometry. And I'm going to change the additional thickness rendering to a much higher number, 75. And when I do that, as you can see, our piece has become more like a tube. I'm going to simply rotate this to adjust how it fits over the bottom of my buckle. It is not becoming curved like this piece here because we turned off the curved side geometry. So while I have my two pieces here, I'm going to shift select them both and freeze them. And then here in the 2D, 3D window is where we can show and hide the color. I can say hide freeze or hide all. These pieces are now in place. So now let's make the prong. I am just going to make a simple single prong in this tutorial. So what we have here is, again, we're going to use the ellipse tool. I'm now going to create an ellipse that is three quarters of an inch. Again, particle distance of one. I'm going to offset the outline. This is going to be a little bit different because the prong is going to be working in a little bit different way. 
and then I'm going to convert this to a hole as well. I'm going to hold shift and rotate this to 45 degrees and then place this around my buckle. Now, as you can see, the opening is too small and that's okay. What I wanted to be able to show here is that you can easily fix this by simply selecting this internal line here with your transform pattern tool. Hold down shift and scale it to make it larger. Then you can simply move this back so that it is in the center of your circle and you can make sure that it goes around the buckle. If we look at our reference picture again, you can see where we are. We have the basic shape and we have the roller. And let's look at what they call the prong, which is the piece that will go through the belt. It goes from the roller across the width of the main part of the buckle and then around the top of the buckle. So we're going to now create that shape. I'm going to use the add point split line tool here, and I'm going to add a segment point on either side of this bottom point on this ellipse that we made here. And I'm going to add that point at 0.1 from the bottom center, 0.1 from the bottom center. Then using my edit pattern tool, I'm going to delete the very bottom point, creating a flat spot here. Now I'm going to select this segment, right click and say offset pattern outline. And I'm going to offset this by two and an eighth inches. So now you can see we're starting to get the shape of our prong. I'm going to rotate this slightly here so that we can see the end here. We will have to adjust its position in the 3D window. Next, I'm going to change the curved side geometry percentage, lowering it from 100% to 25%. Then I'm going to again go down into under simulation properties under additional thickness rendering and change the thickness to eight. So as you can see now, it's still a little curved and it's very thick. It's starting to look like a prong. You can edit the tip here as you would like, depending upon the look and feel of the buckle prong that you would like. And that's what I've done here. As you can see, I've changed the tip a little bit. I have also cut out a piece here on the back so that it looks a little bit more like a realistic prong. And I've also offset the inside of this part so that it's not quite as thick. And I curved a couple of the edges as well. The, def the final design aspect here is that I'm going to select my fabric and change it, the material to metal. And then I'm ready to export this and use this in a garment in Clo. To use your belt buckle, what you can do is simply go to the file menu, export OBJ. Find the location where you want it to go, and I'm going to call this single prong roller belt buckle, just in case I want to duplicate the prong to make a double prong belt buckle. Here in our export OBJ options, I'm going to make sure the select all patterns is selected. Single object, thick. You could change the scale here if you would like, as we made it very large. In this case, you could make it say 50%. I'm going to leave it at the larger scale for now, and I'm going to make sure that this says save with absolute texture image file path and click OK. There are two ways you can add this into your project. If you are adding it into a jacket that you would like to animate, you should consider adding it in as a trim. The other option is to add it in as an avatar, which is what I'm doing. I'm then going to scale it and position it so that it is within the opening of the belt around the waist. And then when it's in place, I will simply simulate and then lower the skin offset around the avatar, which is the belt buckle, so that the belt sits closer. 